remote Martian landscape called the Namib Desert. This is one of the driest locations in Africa. Some years, not a single drop of rain will fall, and so understandably, there's barely any vegetation. This is not the type of place you'd expect to find a huge herbivore, and yet it's home to a very special desert-dwelling giant. Standing six meters from hoof to head, and weighing over a ton, this is the Angolan giraffe. These are the only giraffe that live in the desert. To survive, they need to eat several hundred kilos of leaves every week. So what's a mega herbivore doing in such a lifeless landscape? I'm heading deep into the interior to meet up with a team of conservationists studying these giraffes. Seeing such a massive animal in such a sparse landscape is really quite mind-blowing. I really do think that giraffes are one of the marvels of the natural world. But of course the thing that giraffes are renowned for are their long necks. On a fully grown adult, it can reach up to three meters long. heavy neck weighs over 100 kilograms, but it's also the key to their survival. Dried up riverbeds are scattered with trees, fed by water deep underground. Browsing at the top of the canopy allows giraffes to reach the freshest leaves and shoots. Incredibly, they get all the moisture they need from the leaves they eat, so can survive months without drinking a single drop of water. Males have another use for those necks. Females live in small nomadic groups. And males must compete for their attention. Rivals go head to head in a duel known as necking. It's a raw test of strength. Neither backs down, the 
use their short antlers, or ossicans, to deliver a decisive blow. Only the winner earns the right to breed. Surprisingly, despite these arid conditions, this population of desert-dwelling giraffes is increasing in number. To understand why they're doing so well, scientist Emma Hart from the University of Dublin is studying the genetics of this population. You two, what are we doing out here? You've got a gun. I hope we're not going to be using them on the giraffes. Well, we are, but it doesn't shoot bullets. It just shoots the specially designed biopsy diet. So that diet is used to collect a tiny little sample of genetic material from the giraffe. Um, without hurting the giraffe, it's a non-invasive technique. Great, let's go dart some giraffes. All right, let's go. First, we need to creep close enough to get a clear shot. We're doing our best to sneak up on one of these giraffes. But it's kind of futile because they're the tallest animals in the world. And they can see us coming from a mile away. takes several hours, but finally, we get close enough. Yeah, I can stop there. Taking photographs allows Emma to record which giraffe she's darted. Like a human fingerprint, each has its own unique spot pattern. Okay, ready? where his hooves were and here is our dart and this contains dna that is specific to that giraffe exactly so we already know who the individual is um, and with this genetic information and the genetic information from all the rest of the giraffe in this area we'll be able to tell who he's bred with who his offspring are um, and how related he is to the various other groups of giraffe uh, in the area Through her research, Emma is making some startling discoveries. Males are traveling huge distances, up to 1,000 kilometers a year, in search of food and females. Giraffe need vast spaces to survive. It's something they share with all our megafauna. In other parts of Africa, human activity continually chips away at their remaining habitat, dividing it into smaller and smaller sections. <laughs> 